Hi, thanks for joining us for another behind the scenes video blog. And today I'm very excited to be here with Amy Villainous. Hello. Amy, I discovered several years ago as I was on Facebook. Uh, Facebook is a great place to discover talent. I discovered Amy there. I discovered mm -hmm. Arrakis Productions. I discovered uh, El Sonnet, who plays Ganem Azul. And as a producer, uh, that's one of the things I do. I keep a mental Rolodex of all the awesome talent that I discover, wherever it be. It was great to be able to get a hold of Amy and say, Amy, I think you would be really awesome <laughs> as a part of Dark Darkness. And uh, one of the things that, you know, first uh, caught my eye was her beauty, obviously. And then I noticed uh, she did awesome makeup effects. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been doing makeup effects, or not makeup effects. Um, makeup artistry, yeah. And so when did you start that? <laughs> oh gosh, I started that um, almost right out of high school. So I was 18 when I started. Uh, and really, I, I went right into beauty school, decided I wanted to do the makeup because I couldn't do comics. Co <laughs> comics was a love of yours as well as, as makeup. So you were, sounds like you were just a, a bit of an artist um, early on. Yes, and I wanted to do comics and I guess what really, what was the big revelation for me was that I could take, you know, what I saw in comics, especially the strong female characters, and translate that into makeup. So it was kind of like bringing the characters that I grew up reading to life. That's so. awesome. I was looking through your pictures and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you know, that looks like a character that would be at a darkness convention. That yeah. looks like a character that would be at a darkness convention. And then I started watching um, some of your, you were doing some video blogs for a bit and you were talking about your love of video games yes. and other geekery. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me more about what's your what's oh, your gosh. <laughs> main geekery or some of your my main I, oh, definitely video games. Um, I've been playing video games since I was about six years old. So pretty much, uh, oh, geez, I started playing the Atari oh. back in the eighties. So that was my first introduction. You're not that old. No, but my grandmother had an Atari that me and my cousins would play, and I remember playing the game Coconuts, which no one seems uh -huh. to remember that game, but that's where it started. How about Pit uh, Pitfall? Did you play Pitfall on the Atari? Uh, I don't think I had that one, but I did have the E.T. game, Oh, which was horrible, of course. That's what I hear. It's like a glitch in the game where you're playing as E.T., and then you end up follow falling into this pit, and you, you just can't get out of it. <laughs> so my cousin cousins and I, we spent hours trying to, I don't know, I guess hoping that if maybe we moved to one part of the little screen, we'd be able to flow it out, but never happened. No. So that game has remained unbeaten. You've also been doing some drawings and painting? Yeah, I've always been a painter and an artist. Um, when I was in school, I wanted to be, like I said, a comic book artist. That was my number one passion, uh, which for whatever reason, I ended up deciding not to go to art school because art school is ridiculously expensive. Um, and that's kind of how the makeup idea came about. I was like, well, if I can't go on a comic book, then I'm going to turn other models into comic book characters that, you know, I would normally draw myself. So I'm stepping away from the makeup a little bit. I'm still doing it, but now I'm at a place where I can focus on the art again. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of painting and mm -hmm. doodling and stuff like that. So Do you have a medium you prefer, like pencils or inks? Uh, I love using acrylic paint, like as far as traditional medium goes, I use acrylic paint, uh, colored pencils, like Prismacolors. And then I've been really getting into digital art. I like doing digital paintings. That's that's the future. That's the future of art, unfortunately. Nice. So Yeah, well, I think it's the future of filmmaking, too. Yeah, right? Everything's going digital. Recently, I noticed you have been coming up with these really cool um, wearable art. Mm -hmm. And so tell me how you got started on, on that art. I'm very much inspired by video games and comic books and Japanese street fashion. Um, 
So I was on the search for certain accessories to add to my wardrobe and couldn't really, I wasn't really finding things that uh, I was very happy with uh, online. So I decided I'm just going to start making these things myself and it's taken off from there and I've pretty much become a complete night owl for the past three months and <laughs> you've got a big show coming up I've got a big show coming up on October 26th that's morning market it's the big Halloween show so where is that gonna be at? it's gonna be at El Corazon uh, and it's a artist market that caters specifically to spookier artists mm -hmm. so it's it's very goth themed um, very uh, just very eclectic and you'll find some interesting uh, one-of-a-kind spooky wares. So I would love to see some of the artwork that you have uh, that you will be showing at the show. Are you going to be um, selling your drawings as well as your wearable art? I'm going to have a few uh, of my original pieces there. I'm actually going to be giving away art, an art print for every two items purchased. So that's a little Halloween special yeah. that I have going on. But yes, I do. I'm going to have wearable art and original art. So so this is one of my originals done in Prismacolor pencils. Wow. Of a raven. So that's spooky. Beautiful. Thank you. So the Prismacolors, is that what makes it so vivid? Yeah, Prismacolor pencils, they're just a softer, more like a higher quality artist pencil. Mm -hmm. uh, that are very blendable. Mm. So this was actually the first thing I drew with Prismacolors. Wow. And I was just kind of checking them out to see how well uh, they blended together and mm -hmm. I was very happy with the results. So <laughs> They blend well. Yes, yes. I It almost looks like an oil painting. Almost, not quite, but I kind of knew, I, I knew in my head what I was going to create. Mm -hmm. And that always helps. Uh, that isn't often the case, like in this. This was done in acrylics. I had no idea what this was gonna turn into. It just kind of became this sexy Diabla, uh -huh. Diabla uh -huh. girl uh -huh. smoking a cigarette. Yeah. I don't personally smoke, but it just seemed, you know, smoky devil type of thing. Yeah. Seemed to, to work really well. So. She's got um, some Starbucks qualities, I think. <laughs> yes oh my gosh hand. yeah you know I didn't <laughs> even think about that but the funny thing is is that after I painted this I was like oh my god I like her hair so much that that's what inspired me to ask. go and 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 go from black to kind of a peachy pink color myself so, okay yeah I was like oh yeah. my gosh the resemblance so once again uncanny. my fashion reflects like things that art. I exactly <laughs> there we go <laughs> So. That's awesome. And then what about your wearable art? Do you uh, have any of the, that you can show us? Yes, I've got quite a few pieces. So I've just started making, and I've got cat hair all of them. I've started making, making little rose headbands. Uh, this one has horns. Not all of them do have horns. Um, some of them are... That's very nice. Some That's of nice. them are more spiky. Uh, this is more inspired by the creepy, cute, pastel goth mm -hmm. fashion mm -hmm. culture. Uh, it's just something I'm really into. Uh, and I noticed this one, having just seen Maleficent recently, yes. um, seems to be... It's very much inspired by that, oh, so... Very nice. These are my little tentacle horns. So yeah, this one is inspired by Ursula. Mm -hmm. the, the purple and the black from yeah. The Little Mermaid. And then I've got, I've got some steampunk ones. Steampunk inspired, so these are all the copper, the gold, oh, yeah. and the bronzy colors. So, And then I've got, I love bats, so I've got mm -hmm. a bunch of different little bat products. Cat hair Those on. are great. And these are really good for cosplay. You could do like a Morrigan from Darkstalkers cosplay, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> so what do you suggest someone like me? does with um, the hair clips. If, if I really wanted to do something with those, how would I And you don't have any hair? In? Yeah. Well, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, what I would do is make you a custom pair without the clip on it, and okay. then you would be able to spirit gum it or latex it to your head. What about suction cup? 
Did that work? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's so. all right. And for so this show. for the people interested in the Seattle area, where is the uh, location located? What's the, you said the name of it, but is there an address or a uh, part I don't, of town? I don't know the address off the top of my head. It's at El Cotter Zone. It's at the bottom of Dinny on Capitol Hill, okay. on Dinny and Stewart. Mm -hmm. um, and it's October 26th what from time? noon to five. And the first 50 people that show up get a goodie bag that has something from all the vendors in it. That's pretty cool. So that's exciting. We've also got, we're going to have some uh, some little posters signed for Dark Darkness fans. Uh, Amy's going to sign a couple of those and we're going to have those available in the Kickstarter campaign as, as uh, incentives to help us cross certain thresholds. Uh, right now we're... 69% funded, so oh, we're nice. almost Yay. there. And uh, we definitely want to bring you back yes. uh, for the next season. <laughs> Once we finish season zero, if you'd come back, we'd love yes, to have you. I would love to come back. It was so much fun and something I never, ever thought I would do. So, yeah, if you want to see more of Amy Villainous, more Dark Darkness, check out our Kickstarter campaign and uh, throw us a couple of bones if you want. Definitely come down to El Corazon. El Corazon. El Corazon. El Corazon. And so, yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, so thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again yeah. soon. Bye. Bye.